It's 1066 AD, and William of Normandy leads an invasion force set to conquer England. He believes the English throne is rightfully his. But standing against them is Harold Godwinson, King of England, and his army of Anglo-Saxon English. They will form a shield wall and try to save England from the invaders. Welcome to the Battle of Hastings. All right, Knights of Apollo, welcome to the Battle of Hastings. To your right is the army of the English, the Anglo-Saxons, so the Blue Army. And then the Red Army is going to be the Norman invaders led by William of Normandy. So let's just dive. Let's get a juicy battle going. Let's just go ahead and start this one. So they are off and they are about to clash. Now, most of the arrows here and crossbow bolts are going to be blocked here by the great shield walls from both armies. And the infantry is going at it and it's getting chaotic. The king, Harold of Godwinson, is charging in. He's doing a lot of damage. Now, historically, we know he uh, unfortunately dies in this battle. He takes an arrow to the eye, but we'll see. Oh, God, he just he just hit some of his own troops there, but we'll see if he survives this engagement and can change history because, I mean, this just looks exactly like the battle. Oh, my God, and then here's William the Conqueror who is oddly enough represented by vlad the impaler who just impales someone who goes flying oh my god can we get an epic duel between the two the two kings essentially the two lords let's see oh my god i think oh it's gonna happen guys it's gonna happen vlad or okay not vlad that's it <laughs> it's william versus harold let's see come on come on oh harold gets him harold knocks him out slices him right in the gut and harold godwinson takes out william the conqueror he also has some infantry bodyguards supporting him all that's left now that stands in his way are the crossbows of normandy and look at all the archers of england I think we know how this is going to turn out, but we'll... Oh, oh my god, Harold just dodged two arrows that were headed for his eyes. Now, unfortunately, he got hit in the waist there, but oh, he's getting hit by a lot of arrows. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, he d it misses his eye, though. <laughs> Harold, no. Uh, there was just too many crossbow bolts. And that was so cool. At one point, he, he like, dodged the two arrows going for his face. Now, unfortunately, he does get hit right in the center of his forehead. But it wasn't his eye this time. So, Harold dies here, but his army should be victorious. Boom. There you go. So, in this little first little simulation, the defenders win uh, the Battle of Hastings and change history. Now, we're going to play this battle again, but I just wanted to go a little quick little facts about the Battle of Hastings. Now, historically, William the Conqueror, which I think that kind of that name kind of gives it away, Conqueror, he does win this battle and eventually conquers England, builds a bunch of castles and reforms the English kingdom. And again, he's represented by Vlad here, the Impaler, but we're just going to squint our eyes and pretend it's William the Conqueror. Now, uh, let's not forget that... Uh, Harold and his army just won a battle against Viking invaders and had to march all the way to Hastings to take on William the Conqueror. I genuinely feel bad for Harold Godwinson. I think he was a great leader and a, a great king. He just, he could, he almost won the Battle of Hastings too, but he just couldn't get it done. And it's one of the characters in history that I feel so bad for. I don't know why, but Harold would have been a good king, but yeah, took an arrow to the eye. Uh, now, of course, the, the, uh, the defenders, the English, were known for their shield wall. Their shield wall was so tightly packed together that troops would die, but they wouldn't fall. They would stay standing because it was so tight. I mean, could you imagine being in a situation like that? Some of these units don't make sense. There's like Romans and Greeks. 
they just kind of, I don't know. I think it was just made here to differentiate the, the two armies. Also, these are community-made battles. I've got another community ha uh, battle Hastings that we're going to check out. And then finally, we're going to do uh, a battle that I'm going to make. My interpretation, interpretation of Hastings. So once again, guys, let's go ahead and start this. So, same thing happens. The shields block the projectiles. The infantry's going in. It's chaotic. It's crazy. Once again, the king is charging in. I really hope that Harold and William duel again. And maybe William will get the better of Harold this time. But Vlad is, <laughs> Vlad is just throwing around people with this giant spike. That is so funny that they have... Vlad the Impaler with the giant spike, like as if he would charge into battle with that. Uh, and then they got, look at this guy. He's just twirling around. It's like a berserker, just a mad, a mad Norman berserker. Oh, they are dueling. They're dueling. Vlad's taking care of a poor <laughs> Anglo-Saxon soul. Once again, Harold. No way, did he kill him? Oh my God, Harold kills William the Conqueror almost identically like he almost does it the same way and now he's marching forward let's see oh is he gonna make it the crossbows aren't loading oh i think he's gonna do it okay oh are they gonna pull off a shot here is poor harold gonna die from arrow fire oh i think he's gonna make it the shots oh one hits his belt but it's his belt buckle the other hits his knee <laughs> Oh, and he lives. It's just like grand slam right there. Home run hit. And once again, the defenders are winning. Now, historically, of course, we know the Normans won this one. Uh, but we're going to move on to another community-made Hastings battle scenario. And we're going to see how that one plays out. Okay, so this one is a little off to the Battle of Hastings. Why? Well, both sides have artillery, but I thought that would be fun. That would be cool to see. We also have the archers kind of in the front. I mean, it's kind of like a shield wall, but compared to the last little uh, scenario, I would say this is a little too different from what actually happened. Uh, but I believe the red army here is William the Conqueror, and the blue army is the defending English. Uh, they also have some troops on the flanks here. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure what what these guys are. Uh, they look like they're like camouflaged, like in hay soldiers with wooden sticks, like farmers camouflaged. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to represent here, uh, but yeah, that's interesting. Uh, they also have some halberds. Maybe they represent like the big axemen on the battlefield, uh, some archers, and then they've got a flanking force of swordsmen on the side here. So let's just see how this plays out and how the defenders uh, hold out in this battle. So there they go, big skirmish going going off. Lots of archers die right at the beginning, but oh god, here comes that artillery. Oh, oh, oh my god. A direct hit taking out the uh, axemen. The uh, attacking artillery does some friendly fire there. This is not looking good for uh, the Normans. But here comes William the Conqueror. He's kind of destroying his own army. Uh, but reinforcements come, come in from... Uh, from William the Conqueror. Maybe maybe all these troops on the flank kind of represent that that part in the battle where they they break and reform. I don't know, but here they come. A good artillery hit there. And oh, I think oh, oh, I thought he died there. No, he's he's back at it. And his troops are doing excellent. He just has to watch out for the artillery. Oh! Got to watch out for the artillery. And I think William the Conqueror he's got to get past the archers. Then the artillery, and I think he's going to win this one. Let's see. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> That's just a grand slam swing. Can he get to the artillery, though? Can it reload? Oh, there you go. And William the Conqueror wins this scenario. Let's play it again and see if anything changes. And they're off. Once again, the archer fire. The archers pretty much take each other out. Like, both sides lose both their set of archers. Now they're going to go ahead and clash in the center once again. Oh, the artillery is so brutal. This poor guy is like, catch me, catch me, catch me. Oh, oh my God. It is nasty. And here comes the reinforcements again from the flank. And William the Conqueror is moving in, doing some damage. Oh, oh. 
The artillery is definitely making this battle a lot shorter compared to the other ones. Just doing high damage. And, oh, nice. Oh! Oh, my God. That was so close. And, oh, an arrow takes out that archer. William the Conqueror, once again, is going to take this. And he's going to move on. And he's going to destroy... Oh, no! Oh, he still survives. He takes a direct hit from the artillery. Gets back up. And once again, the Norman invaders win this scenario. So, so far we've seen a scenario where the defenders win all the time. And then we have this one, which is a bit more historically, like the ending is historical. The Normans are winning, but we need to, we need to get one that's a little bit more balanced. So that's where I'm going to go in and make my own scenario. All right, guys, welcome to my version of the Battle of Hastings. Now, in terms of infantry, they were very similar. Uh, they weren't too different. That's why I have the same kind of Viking, you know, round shield soldier on both sides. And the armies were about equal in strength. Uh, so, it, you know, it depends on where you get your sources from because it's ranging for the defenders. It was ranging around five to 13,000. And for the attackers, the Normans, it was about seven to 12,000. So it's pretty much equal. So I kind of gave them equal numbers in terms of infantry. Now, the Normans did have cav in the battle. So I gave them one cav. It's a really strong unit. It, it didn't play that huge of a part in the battle. I mean, it was fairly important at the end. But uh, yeah, I, it just this unit's really strong. So this one guy's representing all the cav. Also, the Normans had archers and crossbows. I didn't really see a good crossbow unit in here. Uh, so I just gave them a lot of archers. Now for the defending side, the Anglo-Saxon English, who of course are the red side here, uh, two rows of infantry. I've gave them some archers, but they are outnumbered to the Normans. And of course we have King Harold Godwinson, and then way in the back for the the Normans, we have William the Conqueror. So guys, are you ready to see how this plays out? I hope, I don't know, I hope it's really close, but we'll see. Let's go ahead and do this. Here we go. So they're about, oh, the archer fire is coming in. The cavs charging in right away. The infantry is about to clash. Swordsmen, axemen have already died. And oh, the cav is just ripping through the infantry. Ripping through the infantry and the two the two lords, the kings, are about to clash. The clash of kings. Oh, I don't know, guys. I think blue is easily winning this one. Oh, my God. Easily winning this one. And, yeah, this is... Yeah, this wasn't even close. It was that cav unit, man. That cav unit. So, we're going to try this again and balance it a little bit better. Welcome to version 2 of the Battle of Hastings. I added two more archers for the defenders, for, uh, for the English. I also put in these halberds because there was like these big axe type soldiers. And I think it will also bring a good balance to the cav. Didn't really change anything to the invaders, but I pushed back the cav way back here to kind of have it a little bit more delayed. So let's see how this little scenario starts here, or how this plays out. Here we go, the Battle of Hastings underway. Once again, the archers are going to open fire. Most of the shots are blocked. Three soldiers die in that volley. And they're about to clash. Oh my god, the shield clash. I love two shield walls going out. And this is just a mess. This is just a mess. Troops are being tossed around. Nothing like the real Hastings. Here comes the cav. And here comes Harold. Uh, where's Willie? William's back here. Harold's getting some kills. He's like, stand your ground, man. Stand your ground. Oh, he just slaps this guy across the battlefield. There's a couple more swordsmen left. This is really close now, but I, those archers are going to be a problem. And the kings. The kings are about to battle. Oh, oh, and William the Conqueror hits him. But Harold's not out yet. He's not out yet. Oh, and he takes out the king's bodyguard. And let's see, but there's so much infantry. And, oh, he takes an arrow. He's getting tossed around. He's getting, oh, and he takes out another soldier. But he hasn't taken out their king, William. Which technically is not a king yet, but William gets the final blow, the final kill. And now there's one archer that stands. And, ah, uh, I still don't like it. I still don't think it's balanced enough. I want this battle to come down to like 
two troops because it really was that close of a battle. So let's try this again. Version number three. I made some slight changes. I added another halberd unit for the defenders. I moved up the infantry so they have a better angle on this hill when the battle starts. I added like one archer and everything is the same for the invaders for William's army. So let's see how this plays out. All right, they're off. Archer fire still really devastating. Just, I don't know, the, the high ground is not really helping. The low ground is actually helping the invaders against the archers. And once again, the uh, infantry is a little bit behind for the English against the Normans. And here, oh, oh, William is the back lines. Troops are getting tired. It's just like, oh, I didn't sign up for this. What's happening? Oh, my God. Oh, what a fight. Okay, this is awesome. Oh, my God. This wasn't even, this was worse. This was worse, guys. Come on. The, oh, he's getting, he's getting tossed around. Oh. Oh. He's holding, though. The king, look at that. He just pulled a matrix there, dodged an arrow, but unfortunately kills the archer behind him. Oh, but he didn't dodge that one, and he's out for the count. And the invaders win way more decisively than last time. Ah, oh, this is tough. Okay, I had enough. I had enough of the of the Anglo-Saxons losing, okay? The English, the Anglo-Saxon English are going to hold. I added a whole nother line of infantry. Let's see if that's enough to win this battle. All right, they're off. The infantry still just heavily outnumber the Normans. And uh, it's really, let's see how much damage this cab can do. <laughs> Look at a derpy self run into the battlefield. They're like, hold on. All right. Yeah, the cab's gonna help out a ton. Here comes. Oh, wow. I don't know what it is about the Normans, but. Oh, the kings are at it again. Harold already has, like, a bunch of. Oh! Did he just kill him? No, no, no. He just took a hit there. Let's see how he recovers from it. Oh, he's taking on the knight. Oh! And he. Oh, we got ourselves a king battle, guys. We got ourselves a king battle. Oh, oh, come on. Let's see. Can Harold. No, he takes an arrow and dies before he can get his swing off. And William the Conqueror continues to march. And guys, I can't believe it, but I think they're going to win again. You know, as much as I feel bad for Harold, as much as I feel bad for Harold Godwinson, the man killed by an arrow in the eye who just tried to serve his kingdom, who is defending his lands against two armies... Even in, in tabs, he can't get any luck. And I'm just going to have to call it here. History repeats itself. And William the Conqueror takes out the defending army. Even with an extra line of infantry, he's not able to... To pull it off well that was a lot of fun guys i'm really enjoying tabs uh if you want to see a certain battle let me know down in the comments let me know what battle you want me to recreate and i will certainly do that it's been really cool to be able to pull these battles from the community as well just to see what other people have made but thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys next time on the battlefield no soldiers were actually harmed in the making of this film